if there is a Tesla bot, uh, then you obviously know that the first thing that people are trying to figure out is if they can have sex uh, with said bot. <laughs> because people are disgusting but i'm also curious if that's possible what? what's up guys omni here you guys know how it goes another day another video last night i tweeted i slate what recent news topics tweets videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow and yeah we're doing a back-to-back -back news segment a lot of you guys are probably surprised to see me today but <laughs> yeah there's enough topics to talk about that we can go ahead and uh yeah make another video to be honest i'd make a video every day if there was enough like news to talk about it doesn't always have to be drama sometimes it can be world news sometimes it can just be funny news there's enough topics for us to really just sit down for like a 10 to 12 minute video then I would give that to you guys every day if possible so just as a reminder if you guys do want to contribute just follow me on Twitter and then every time I say I sleep just come through and, and hit me with a topic that you think would be interesting for everyone to watch and uh yeah anyway I think today's video is going to be kind of short and sweet we have like about four to five topics to talk about but they're pretty big but I'm also going to keep it you know nice TLDR for you guys so sit back and relax and and uh yeah allow me to <laughs> laid on you so i'm what said tesla bots that's right we're here boys and girls it's time for the androids it's time for the robots it's time for that i robot life you know how we go finally reached the jetsons phase even though we're not 10 million feet in the air uh sawyer merritt there's a tweet here link that says breaking tesla unveils the tesla bot it's apparently 5 8 um <laughs> screen for useful info 40 electromagnetical actuators I, I don't know what that means human level hands what I, I i mean i get human hands but what do you mean human level hands and, and then two axis feet for balancing it is this a cap this has got to be a cap anything with tesla and elon musk i assume it's a cap but at the same time i also wouldn't put it outside the realm of possibility for this guy so uh, let's look at this there's a 40 second video showing it to you guys in case you haven't seen it let me just show you right now so yeah that's literally it here's the tesla bot for you guys it has a uh, up to the shoulders is up it's black completely black from what we can see for right now and uh going down is completely white so um it, it actually looks pretty good to be honest going into a little bit more detail it says tesla bot world built by humans humans for humans friendly eliminates dangerous repetitive boring task um, height 5 8 carry capacity 45 pounds it can deadlift 150 pounds it weighs 125 pounds the speed is five miles per hour so you, you know you're not gonna be able to run track against it and the arm extend lift is 10 pounds so this bad boy is a it's it's a he's pretty strong okay he's not very fast but um yeah i'm pretty strong in terms of the technical details okay this is real i know you guys looking at this and being like like, bro, I, I don't believe this has got to be a cap. This is real. That's Elon Musk on the bottom left talking about the, the specs, bro. Uh, screen for useful information right here, aka, you know, recording uh, all the information they need. Lightweight materials, human level hands, two axis feet for balancing, uh, force feedback sensing. I, I don't know what a lot of these things mean, but it just basically means that it can stand up, uh, I guess, and it has balance. 40 electromechanical actuators uh yeah and finally this robot also has ai for general purpose robotics so that means that there's enough ai in this robot that it won't take over and kill you <laughs> it's got autopilot cameras an fsd computer multi-cam video neural networks neural net planning auto labeling and dojo training okay hold up What's dojo training? What do you mean dojo training? So you are, this bot is trained to kill, son? Is it trained to fight? What you, what's dojo training? And last but not least, this guy who's basically revealing all this information said the prototype will be ready in 2022. That's next year, bro. Ain't no way. Ain't no way that we're going to get a daggone prototype for an AI bot before <laughs> Silk Song, Hollow Knight Silk Song. No. Ain't no way. Anyway, as you guys can see, the internet had a ball with it. Uh, <laughs> this guy said me trying to figure out how to teach my Tesla bot to twerk. I, if there is a Tesla bot, uh, then you obviously know that the first thing that people are trying to figure out is if they can have sex uh, with said bot. <laughs> because people are disgusting but i'm also curious if that's possible what me seeing the first tesla bot in public oh my god oh my god <laughs> oh no i ain't messing with you oh, <laughs> anyway yeah that's the tesla bot probably something that you probably need to know that could potentially be happening into our future i'm curious to see how this comes off and what happens to tesla stock going forward and if there's any updates i'll let you guys know all right pharaoh and a lot of you guys asked me to talk about this this is also super trending as of this morning and last night uh pharaoh needs 20,000 said people trying to cancel hassan 
for buying a house. That's exactly right. If you guys don't know Hassan, Hassan, Hassan Abi, he's a very popular, probably the most popular Twitch streamer in terms of political commentary. Uh, likes to talk about political stuff. <laughs> the dude who talks about politics. And yeah, he's very popular. He gets like 30,000, 20,000 views on average whenever he does stream almost every single day. And my man's bought a house. It's kind of similar to the situation with Nico Lulz, where she bought like a $2 million apartment like a couple months ago in Texas. And people were like, oh, how dare you? You How dare you do such a thing? Well, now people are doing this with Hassan because apparently, you know, a lot of what he preaches has to do like with anti-capitalism, pro-socialism, you know, a more fair distribution of wealth and how, you know, I guess the idea like taxing the rich and all that jazz. So people are upset, specifically his audience, because yes, it looks like he's doing the opposite of what he's preaching. This whole shtick where people are saying like, hey, socialism, you know, make money based off like talking about being broke. Then they get rich. <laughs> <laughs> but let me clear some things up for you guys. First, I'm going to talk about the situation and then I'm going to like talk to you guys from a non-political standpoint because I'm a certified public accountant. I understand money. So when I see this situation, I see it objectively and I see so much misinformation and such a misunderstanding that I, I feel like I can clear a lot of ignorance. So before we hit Twitter, my boys at Dexdardo has an article, Hassan hits back at Twitch outrage over him buying a 2.74 million Hollywood home. So let's read this really fast. Hassan, Hassan Piker hit back, blah, 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 we just said. Everyone needs to collectively calm down and telling his haters to suck his D. <laughs> Hassan's success reached new heights in 2021. He currently has 1.5 million followers and 50,000 active subscribers on Twitch. 50 thousand that's huge it's got to be one of the highest fifty thousand times five that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars half of that is 125k a month but he probably has a much bigger cut so he's probably making a lot more than 125k and that's off subscribers that has nothing to do with donations it has nothing to do with brands my man's is making bank okay good for him and the numbers keep on rising so it's only natural that he'd cash in his chips and buy a new home however the internet erupted into a heat debate after an article reported his new home in west hollywood costing him a whopping 2.74 million which some people saw as hypocritical given that he identifies as a social it's not the first time that it's happened either nicole nicolos i literally just said the same thing it's so cool it's like you know we're the same person it says however many people rush to her defense and they're doing the same for hassan so i will say this okay <laughs> that's kind of wrong that's erroneous not a lot of people rush to nico lowell's defense in fact she got picked apart by the internet destroyed bamboozled redonk like they came at her throat uh, for a $2 million apartment. Now, people come into the defense for Hassan is much higher. What Nico Lulz did was way smaller. Not only is it $2 million and it's smaller, but it's also an apartment, not actual equity in a home in LA. He's also been hitting back at the haters himself too. For the most part, that includes individual responses to fans claiming he's disingenuous, should donate a significant amount of money to charity given his riches, and should keep advocating for higher taxes on the rich, including himself. I don't know if this is the actual mansion, here it says Hassan's new house on the luxurious mansion I can't wait until the house tour if he does a house tour I'm watching it <laughs> we're gonna watch it somewhere somehow if it's you know on this channel somewhere I'm watching it just because you know now there's so much uh I don't know drama around his freaking place now I don't want to know and I also want to know if he's also buying this is it just for him to live in does he have like a family because I think a lot of people don't recognize that sometimes when people buy houses they buy it so that multiple people can live in some people have parents, moms, dads, siblings. So I, I don't know if this this situation, but let me read more. Hassan has responded to the outrage. The essence of the argument against him is simple. Essentially, some Twitch fans feel like Hassan isn't practicing what he preaches, given that he's apparently indulging in an expensive lifestyle. Many others have been calling him out on social media too. They made various points about his situation and he's been responding. And one example, he took a swipe at a user who claimed it was quote, immoral for him not to donate significant amounts of money to charity given his wealth, claiming that he donates money both publicly and privately. He wrote, I do donate, some public, most not. However, this is an effing brain dead take that keeps dumb asses thinking Bill Gates is a good guy, by the way. Many other comments followed, including from one user who claimed buying matches isn't how you solve social issues and accused him of only donating to charity to evade taxes, which donating to charity is... <laughs> Again, I will get that to the details for you guys a little bit later. I will explain that to you guys so that you can understand it so that it makes more sense. Quote, you really think doing my personal accounting is valid political critique? <laughs> Hassan said in a deleted tweet about a house for my family. It's also where I intend to stream every day. Why is any of this your effing business? So he's 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 raging. He's mad. He's like, how dare you? In the end, he said everyone collectively needs to calm down and those still after his head 
can suck his D. He also joked about what kind of wonderful intelligent discord would transpire if he decided to upgrade his car. This one says, when a streamer keeps his monthly salary on screen, turns out to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious because he's been very openly you know i think he puts his subscriptions on his stream so you guys know exactly how much money he's making so here's a good statement and it's from hasanabi himself he said i admit i probably came across too aggro at this random person but the necessity of charity is an indication of systematic failure which i agree with it's still useful to help out mutual aid orgs in the short term but that's not how you saw structural problems the rich also use it as a tax shelter which is 100 1000 percent okay I i'll just go ahead and let you guys know how charity works with the rich. But these are some examples, but these are examples that have actually been used by rich people that you probably know, okay? For example, let's say that you wanna to donate to charity. The reason why you donate to charity is because you can write off taxes. And you, when you donate to charity, it doesn't have to be cash. Sometimes you can donate something like properties or buildings or things like that. These buildings and these properties have what's called an assessed value, AKA when you do donate it, it's worth a certain much. So if I give you a property and it's worth $1 million right now, I get $1 million in terms of write outs. However, However, I might specifically know that this property is going to be worth $200,000 within the next year or so. I know that this property is going to depreciate like hell. So if this property ended up being like $100,000 after a year, which is very extreme, but if I know that's what's going to happen, I just donated something for a million dollars. That's what my profit is for something that's going to be worth $100,000 later. This is an, an example that is being used all the time with any kind of asset that has an assessed value where you put it in high and then it depreciates low. On the flip side, this works oppositely, okay? Some people will do something with their taxes where they will donate property to uh, maybe a retirement fund or, or, or something like that. And they'll put in something that's of low value. They might give stocks or shares to a, an organization that they know is going to be very, very low, or maybe they'll put it for themselves, and then they'll switch it to a Roth IRA. The Roth IRA is a quick conversion that doesn't cost too much money, and then the assessed values and the properties and all of this stuff will go up high, because they know how to make it go up high, and then the gain that they get on these properties and on these shares is not taxed. It's very, very difficult for the IRS to come in later and be like, wow, you just made a lot of money in your IRA based off these uh, values of these things going up, there are so many tax shelter ways to avoid paying taxes and the rich are good at it. And that's why they're the rich because <laughs> they understand the tax code and they know how to abuse it. Now, I don't know Hassan, but I do not think he is at the level where he is technically right now abusing the tax code for his own profit. Obviously, he wants to do good for him and his family and make as much money as possible. But is he out here dodging taxes using assessed property values and, and tax shelters and Roth IRAs and, and kickbacks from other charity events? There's a lot of rich people who donate to charities because they're their friends and they know them and they know in the future they'll get a kickback. It's all a circle, okay? It's all a, a big, rich circle jerk. <laughs> you give money to this person, they give money to this person, you give money to this person, eventually it's going to come back. So giving away money doesn't actually even mean giving away money. At the, it just ends up circulating back in some form of way. That's the biggest issue with the tax code and I guess, you know, being upset with rich people. And I do not think that Hassan fits in that category. Anyways, I was gonna read through some tweets like Ethan Klein, a lot of people would come up here for his defense. I'm not out here preaching socialism or capitalism. I'm not going to give you guys that political standpoint because I don't really like politics, but as a certified public accountant, I can tell you that the majority of these people crying and being big baby rage mad do not understand how money work. And, and I, I'm not going to, you know, hate them because that's the whole point. The tax code and how money works is meant to be complicated so that you can't understand it, so that you can't use it, so that the people who are rich can continue to abuse it. It is purposely complicated to make sure that you cannot take advantage of it. But the people who are rich, they know it in their ins and out. They they move it. They swing it. They 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 manipulate it so that they can continue to stay rich. Anyway, that's the whole Hassan situation, buying a $3 million house. I don't really care. I mean, do you guys know how much Keanu Reeves' house costs? Do you know how many assets that he has? Do you know how many cars that he has? Everybody freaking loves Keanu Reeves. If this man put out his <laughs> charitable contributions, maybe they won't. I don't know. I don't think that needs to be done. Like, hey guys, look, I'm giving money to people. Love me because yes, it can be a PR stu stunt, but I think everyone right now is just getting on Hassan because he can finally afford something nice for himself after working. This is money, by the way, that's being provided by his subscribers, okay? If his subscribers don't 
want him to live this way, they can literally just unsubscribe, but they won't because he's providing a service. So yeah, that that's my take on it, okay? I don't think Hassan was in the wrong. I don't think Nico Lulz was in the wrong, but I'm not going to go into the political nature of it. Just speaking objectively, factually, from a CPA perspective, that a lot of people have no idea what they're talking about. So Generation Game said OnlyFans banning explicit content. This is one of the big chunky wongies of yesterday, one of the big announcements where everyone was getting big baby rage mad uh, because uh, the, as you can see here by the title of this tweet, OnlyFans to ban content showing quote, sexually explicit conduct. Now, from what I understand, there's two sides of the story here, okay? Some people believe that apparently OnlyFans is going to shut down all adult-oriented type subjects, meaning you can't do anything there. You can't show no booty, no, no boobies. You can't show none of that, okay? But some people are also reporting that apparently it's not that. You can still do the softcore stuff. There's just more hardcore parts of OnlyFans they're trying to get rid of. Like when it comes to like, like I, mean, I can't say any of the words because the YouTube will just knock me out. But just, you know, the extreme level, you know, nasty stuff. You know, that, that nasty, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that nasty stuff. So I'm going to try to figure out and give you the exact information that you need to know. I don't want to give you guys any, you know, false stories. I'm going to get down to the bottom of this, okay? This article from Reuters says, OnlyFans, the online subscription platform known for adult content, will prohibit users from posting any material containing sexually explicit contact, the company said on Thursday. So let's, let's define this, okay? The London-based company said in a statement that the changes which will go into effect October 1st were to comply with the request of its banking partners and payment providers. So from what I understand, when you have that kind of content on your platform, then there are some, like, again, banking payments and payment providers, probably like PayPal, that probably won't work with you. Therefore, yeah, I guess you lose on a lot of money. Quote, in order to ensure the long-term sustainability of the platform and to continue to host an inclusive community of creators and fans, we must evolve our content guidelines, OnlyFans said. They said it will allow creators to post content containing nudity if it was consistent with the OnlyFans policy. So, now I want to know exactly specifically what this OnlyFans policy is. I'll see if I can find it for you. But knowing them, they probably won't release this quite yet. Uh, the site, which was founded in 2016, has boomed in popularity during the COVID-19 pandemic, says it has 130 million users. OnlyFans also this week said it was launching a new streaming platform, an app called OFTV, on which creators can share video content on topics such as fitness, cooking, comedy, and music. I thought that thing said offline TV for a second. All right, guys, Detective Omni has found it. I found the official OnlyFans uh, terms of service. And after looking through the terms of service, I found specifically the policy that they were referencing. And this policy does specifically say that there is basically harsh material that they don't want to have. In fact, I might have to blur out some of this stuff on the screen because sometimes just putting the words on the screen for YouTube is enough for them to, you know, get pissed off and demonetize. But after reading this, it seems to be very extreme acts of, of sexual stuff is not allowed. However, softcore stuff is still there, which I think is good and safe because I think the predominant of most sex workers out there who are working on OnlyFans do tend to do like more softcore stuff. And even if it's a little bit more hardcore, you know, like, you know, toys or whatever, it still is allowed in here. Okay. I think they're just trying to go away from like the extreme things that are kind of questionable again <laughs> um, versus just, you know, basics. But I think the problem and the scary thing is that there might be a snowball effect. If you start peeling back, you know, what is extreme, they could continue to dial it back more and more. And I think that's the risk that's involved. Also, a lot of people are kind of upset because uh, they feel like that this entire website was built based on sex workers. And now that, you know, they are large enough to basically say, okay, I want to peel away a portion of what has made us big. The concern is, can this continue to happen? And, and the, the point is, is that yes, after they do do this, there is a potential chance where they keep going further and further and further. Nothing's stopping them. And again, for some of you guys, who don't understand the reason or the why like why is only fans doing it just why again it comes down to money uh the company is seeking investors at a valuation of more than one billion dollars but this had difficulty attracting investors according to a report from axios mainly because of the proliferation of p on the site axios notes the company didn't mention P graphy at all and its pitch deck to investors. Despite its ability to draw eyeballs and the safer environment it provides sex workers, online P is a hard sell. 
for investors. Recall that as Verizon prepared to sell Tumblr to Automatic, the blogging site permanently banned adult comment in 2018, a highly controversial move at the time. So a lot of people are comparing this to the site Tumblr. Tumblr used to be that place where anything could exist, anything could go. It was that place and then Tumblr removed it so that they could sell it and they can make more money. Along with the announcement about sexually explicit content, OnlyFans published its first monthly transparency report for July on Thursday as part of our commitment to safety and transparency. So guys, that's the truth about the OnlyFans situation, okay? Share this with your friends and your family if you have any people who work in sex workers to calm their fears, okay? In terms of the content, it can still exist. Is there a chance that it can disappear later? Yes, but will it happen anytime soon? I don't think so. It seems like they're just trying to peel off a portion of the really hardcore stuff so that they can have a better sell when it comes to investors because investors don't want to touch anything that could potentially be a liability. So that's where they're starting off is the extreme liability of things, you know, like non-consent, things that deal with animals, just questionable <laughs> techniques. Me personally, I'm glad. I have a lot of friends who work in the sex industry and they use OnlyFans as a way to get by and make money. And it's a service. It's a legit service that plenty of people are paying for it's a an exchange for money for a service and i'm happy for them so i would hate to see this there's some people out there in the world who just want to see this entirely fall they want this to just crumble and then everyone who's like you know making money off of this during a pandemic will have to get a real job i i don't i don't quite get that that concept you know like unemploying all of these people and their livelihoods of what they're doing it to me it seems like it stems from jealousy and the fact that these people don't believe that these services should be paid for i i, I don't get that kind of like level of hatred but yeah i uh i'm very glad that this is not something that is becoming permanent and um yeah that's the only fan situation let me know how you guys feel about it so arzor said heavenly and griffy situation okay uh this is a continuation of the video that we talked about yesterday um i'm going to give you guys a quick summary of the events that are happening i'm just going to kind of stick to the facts and let you know what has occurred okay a youtuber anime youtuber named heavily controller uh was uh basically alleged for sa you know what that stands for from what i've seen from what i know there was two twit longers but there were three girls insisting that yes that this is what he has done one of them was a lot more disturbing than the others and yeah he got canceled on the internet he went on youtube or twitch or somewhere and he live streamed it and in the live stream he kind of confessed to a few things that some of the twit longers were doing and it was very discombobulated and, and and it was not a really good idea he later deleted or removed it or i don't know if it's still there or whatever but then he got canceled and dragged and the entire internet hates him it's been a it's been really rough for the anime community and the black community in terms of just hearing all this information trying to understand his point of view from there a uh, youtuber by the name of long beach griffey a lot of you guys probably know him he's on youtube trying to always get canceled making very very controversial skits that <laughs> he's just uncancelable he's like the eminem of youtube man he will literally offend you over and over again and, and he offends every single group black people white people gay people transgender people he goes for the heart it goes for though for everyone but he's also always i guess trying to tell a message at the same time i'm not going to go into defense of him or anything like that or define his channel it is what it is and uh yes long beach currently stressed tf out griffy is friends with heavy controller and he did a spaces a spaces on twitter is when you come out there and uh, you talk and you say how you feel about something and people can come in and listen and in this spaces he said some questionable things uh trying to defend his friend heavily controller at one point i think he said and as you guys can see here hold victims accountable for not saying no suggesting that you know if you're a woman uh and you're not verbally saying no before the advances uh that's on you that's was one of his opinions uh and then also apparently he was on stream and he was you know getting very emotional apparently crying when he was referring to heavily controller saying that it wasn't his character and his nature uh saying that he's just you know socially inept it's a two minute and 15 second video that if you guys just want to watch but i i don't want to play it here just because it gets a little it feels way too much too way too intimate i don't really feel comfortable with it but it's here it's on the internet if you want to watch the details so yeah after the whole spaces conversation happened long beach griffey basically got lumped in with a uh, heavily controller as being hey we need to cancel them everyone's trying to smoke the the heavenly and uh, long beach griffey uh <laughs> pack and uh, definitely did not make things better for himself. And he responded and he said, I said what I said. I meant that to the bottom of my core. I don't give a F about how you feel about it. Doubling down and then saying no backpedaling, no backing down. I will die on this hill. To the friends I've lost today, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I hold no grudges. Y'all be easy though. Now guys, what you don't
don't see here is two things. Number one, he made a, uh, a video, uh, and I think it's still up on his YouTube video, where he says, uh, when feminists uh, talk about SA, essentially, and it's a literal skit about this situation that's happening with Heavenly Controller and, <laughs> and, and Long Beach Griffey, you know, fashion, it, it made a lot of people be like, oh my God, this is the video that will get him canceled. Usually every YouTube video that he makes, people think, wow, this is going to get him canceled. But he basically portrays the situation of what happened. He, he reenacted it on how he feels about it, basically insinuating that the girl came in and flirted with him and came here under the pretenses to, you know, engage in sex with heavily controller and then after it happened backdashed out of it and claimed that it was it was bad is what he basically gave the message of the video there's more nuance to it obviously you'd have to watch it on youtube let me just make sure if it's still on youtube actually oh it's not here okay he removed it so he had uploaded it it already had like six hundred thousand views at this point and i'm actually surprised that he actually removed it because a lot of the stuff as you guys can see is you know is this questionable you know stuff that people would probably remove a video for and literally everyone was every one of these videos is something that <laughs> people were like oh my god so he did remove it and it already had like six hundred thousand plus views and you know, funny enough, bro, I mean, not funny enough, but interestingly enough, there was like 40,000, 50,000 likes on it compared to like maybe 2,000 dislikes. So the atmosphere on YouTube was way more accepting of his message and speech than the people on Twitter because on Twitter, what you don't see is that he actually deactivated for a second uh, and, and stepped off. Uh, he was no longer on there and he basically left the internet. He first deleted the video and then he stepped away from Twitter. And then finally, he made this post right here. He said, um, honestly, appreciate a lot of you for the support. That stuff was super hard for me to do. I've taken accountability for the video I've made, things I've posted, and the position I put a lot of my friends in. I addressed the situation and issued an apology on Twitch, and I have cut ties to anyone involved and not involved. Moving forward, I will consider my actions. I love y'all. Thank you guys for being good to me in light of this chaos. So I don't exactly know what this means because I did not watch the Twitch VOD of Long Beach Griffey. I didn't watch this stream. I didn't know it existed. I don't know if this happened while I was sleeping or whatever. I'm on East Coast time. I don't know. But if he's saying here that he's cut ties to anyone involved, I don't know if he means that he's cut ties with Heavily Controller himself. Speaking of Heavily Controller, I said yesterday that I hope that he comes out with a statement, whether like a twit longer or some kind of video or something basically explaining the events, giving his side of the story, basically, when these things happen, you know, the twit longer comes out. I always feel like it's healthy, it's a good to just wait to see what the other party has to say. Don't just jump down their throat. Like, let all the information come out at least before you decide to choose signs, in my opinion. But uh, I think the problem here was that in his Twitch VOD that he did, or his stream initially, he had already kind of confirmed some of the twit longers. So at that point, it, was, it seemed like it was already done done. But yeah, here's a minute and 25 second video. I'm gonna play this because I want you guys to have the full story of this whole thing so that you guys can come to your own conclusions and, and reasonings and just for completion's sake. First and foremost, to anybody who was indirectly affected by the situation because of their association with me, I take full responsibility for that. And that was never my intention. And if you choose to distance yourself from the situation or me because of that, I completely understand. I would and have done the same. As for any of these allegations of me not um, abiding by someone's consent or by my have not and will not ever do anything like that, that is not in my character. Um, so he is saying he's denying it. He's denying it. He's saying anyone who's coming at him with these these claims, he's denying it did not happen at all um when i did that stream in my head i was trying to be honest and try to be transparent because i had nothing to hide but now i know because of the advisement of people around me that that was irresponsible of me and um i was not very concise in what i was saying and literally just throwing words out to be picked apart and scrutinized on the internet and i should have known better so he's saying that he should not have done the live stream. To be honest, coming out there and doing a live stream like that, that fast after the situation, again, I don't know why none of his friends said no. Do not do that. It's like the equivalent of going to court 
and, and representing yourself you, you, because you're innocent. Like Just because you think that you're innocent or that you feel you're innocent does not mean that that's a good idea. It's still the most terrible idea that you can do. And to be honest, with this kind of sensitivity, you want to make sure that you be careful. That The idea is to be factual and to be honest and make sure that there's no misinterpretations. And when you do streams like that, like he did, it's, it's very open up for a lot of different interpretations. But at the same time, it revealed some truths that may not have happened during a twit longer, potentially him saying that some of the stuff that was said out there is in fact true. I know, I don't know the details. I don't know what he's saying specifically is true, but I believe he said that he did put his hands on one of the girls. Um, which is why that video is no longer available, even if people are going to take it and pick it apart, what have you. And I understand that regardless of anything that I say, there's going to be people who have already made up their minds about me. And um, I, I fully understand, you know, there's only so much that I can say. All you can do, all I can do is tell you, speak from the heart, be real with you, the kind of person that I am, the kind of like person, what I'm about, and um, you can take it or leave it. I'm going to continue with my life and not address this past this point. So um, that's all I have to say on the matter. All right, so basically saying I'm denying the claims, I'm going to move on. You guys are gonna have your assumptions, interpretations about me, but there's not much that I can do to change that. I'm just letting you know what it is and it's your decision to to do what you want to do. Anyway, as you guys can probably imagine, this video also did not do well. I, 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 I'm not exactly sure if Heavily Controller has like people that he can talk to because this again was not a good idea. I, making a video one minute is, is almost like kind of like James Charles. Like this, it, it never works when you're sitting on your bed and you decide to be real. Okay, the people want facts. People want conciseness. People want you to put energy, time, and effort, and take your time and, and summarize your thoughts in a way that makes sense and give a complete side to it. That's what people want on the Twitter. But obviously, these people aren't obligated to anything. So you can do whatever the hell you want. But as you can see, doing whatever the hell you want, so like something like this, does have repercussions because. This got terrible backlash. You can see here the truth said, I'm sure you will try not to address this moving forward. It's too late though. Your true colors have already been revealed. And a lot of his friends, you know, Afro Sinju, a lot of people in the community have verbally said that they are basically distancing themselves from Heavily Controller, that they don't support it, and they are completely disgusted. So guys, that's the Heavily Controller Long Beach Griffey situation that's going on within the anime and Twitter universe. I think one point that people were trying to make is that this girl, essentially, one of the girls, I uh, think, had a boyfriend at the time. And uh, was I think she might have like locked her account or something like this. But apparently she was basically suggesting that uh, Heavily Controller could have been a rebound for if she broke up with this girl or something. So people are insisting, insinuating that because she was being flirtatious, that, you know, then everything was fine or, or basically condemning that what he was doing was fine. In my opinion, flirting's not consent, okay? Just because a girl flirts with you does not mean she has given you permission to touch her body. It does not work like that. Especially when there's alcohol involved, you have to be extremely careful. A girl can come over to your house and intend to want to sleep with you and then, you know what, when the, the time comes, maybe she don't want to. <laughs> uh, and, and I can understand the social cues not being picked up on, which is why I continue to say to clear up any kind of misconception is to ask. What would have completely erased all of this in terms of situations is the literal direct communi communication of can I, <laughs> of asking a question, asking permission. When you just ask permission, then the he say, she say thing would be here was like, did he ask permission? Did he get consent? And if he did, this is all gone. It's not, there's nothing going on. It's there. Maybe afterwards she didn't want to, and that can be talked about. But if consent is said and she says, he didn't ask for consent and he says, I did ask for consent, then that's, that's the, that's the he say, she say part. But literally just asking is what I'm trying to express is all that is necessary to avoid confusion. Yesterday I said that like consent is, you know, it's healthy and sexy. And I read a couple of YouTube comments where people were like, guys were saying, Omni, that's a lie. That's fake. Don't put that information out there. Asking for consent is not, that does not work in real life. It does not work in IRL. And I, and I, and I got to tell these people that I, I don't think that you have IRL experience <laughs> if you were specifically saying that. If you can't smoothly ask a girl permission to touch her or to kiss her or to take any kind of moves, hey, not my fault that you got bad game, dog. My, it's not my fault. <laughs> but even if you don't think that exists, okay, let's look at the alternative, okay? You can sit there, you can ask a girl for permission and she can be like, Ugh, nah, you cheesy. That's 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 cornballish. I just wanted you to, to come kiss me. I, I don't want you to ask for me. Okay, fine. Good. That happened. You move on or you can actually do the action and then therefore at one point in time 
Something like this might happen. So take your pick, okay? All I'm trying to say, asking for consent will always put you in a better place, okay? If it works, then bam, you get to kiss the girl. And if it doesn't work, then bam, you avoid situations like this and you move on to the next, okay? I, I assure you, okay? Your desperation to smash or score is not worth it. Establish it, okay? And if it does become a situation in the future, let that establishment be the fact of whether or not the party consented or not, at least let that be the basis. And in my opinion, in this situation, because this is not the basis and some of the things he has said has gone against that basis, it puts him in a terrible limelight and yeah. So yeah, that's the heavily controlled situation, Long Beach Griffey. Let me know how you guys feel about the situation. Um, Again, I'm just trying to give you guys the facts about the situation, but also giving you my thoughts and my opinion as well. I know a lot of you guys are gonna have a lot of different opinions, but again, I think it does come down to consent. And, and again, I'll address one more thing, by the way, I do agree that there's a lot of people taking advantage of the situation, okay? When it comes to the cancel trains, uh, one of the responses that I always see is like, I knew this dude was sus, you know, and that that hindsight thing where people are like, I knew this dude was weird. I knew this dude was sus and pull up kind of receipts to kind of corroborate it. And it always works, you know, when it actually happens to be the case, right? And when it happens to be the case, then it works. But if there was a situation and that existed here where Heavenly Controller was innocent and then people use these receipts or said these things that like, I knew this guy was sus, then it would all flip backwards and be backwards. So anyone going backwards and using those evidence as the basis for the result is I think you got to be very careful with that, right? You have to be very careful because we've seen time and time again on the internet that people get canceled falsely, especially when not all the information is gone out there and people will go back and dig up in their history and try to find ways to prove the specific point, even though that might not be the truth. So just again, be careful, get more information. And for Heavenly Controller, I don't think this is going to be the last statement that he's going to make because that statement was again, equally as bad. I don't know how he's going to move on with his life on the internet with everyone pissed off at him without a proper response. So that's just me. But all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. I think this actually might be longer than I thought. I did a lot of talking, but let me know how you guys feel about everything. If you made it to the end, uh, you know, drop a like, uh, subscribe. If you guys haven't already, I'm going to uh, leave now. So <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me and uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. I'll probably be streaming sometime over this weekend. I'm going to be uploading a lot more content to the second channel. That's the goal. That's the strategy. So yeah, I'll see y'all later. I hope you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Be good to yourselves and peace.